nobody's going to be as cute as you. NVIDIA, unsurprisingly, had a lot to say about AI at the Consumer Electronics Show. An inflection point for AI. It launched Vera Rubin, its next-gen successor to the Blackwell platform that's currently using its most powerful AI chips. NVIDIA describes its new architecture as six chips that make up one AI supercomputer, including the Vera CPU and Rubin GPU, and claims that Rubin GPU can deliver up to five times more AI training compute than Blackwell. The Vera Rubin launch was expected for late this year, so why is it here early? NVIDIA CEO Jensen Wang says that because the amount of computation required for AI is, is skyrocketing, Vera Rubin needs to be in production right now in order to address that. And then there's AI for autonomous driving. The world's first thinking, reasoning, autonomous vehicle AI. Alpameo, a newly announced portfolio of AI models, blueprints and datasets, can give vehicles level 4 autonomy, which basically means they can drive themselves without human intervention but under very specific conditions. The first AV car from NVIDIA is going to be on the road in Q1. The first passenger car that's going to be launching with this technology is the Mercedes-Benz CLA. My colleague Andrew, who's already taken that Mercedes for a test drive, says that Tesla has plenty to be concerned about. Okay, so what about gaming? We didn't get any consumer GPUs this year, but that is to be expected. Not only did NVIDIA previously say it was going to cut its gaming GPU production by 30 to 40% starting in 2026, but it also tends to release its RTX gaming cards on a two-year schedule anyway. And we got the RTX 50 series at CES last year. So instead, we get stuff like the launch of DLSS 4.5, which offers visual improvements and fewer artifacts compared to DLSS 4. Those with newer GPUs will see far greater benefit, however, because it's going to run faster on people that have an RTX 40 or 50 series graphics card. NVIDIA is also planning to launch native GeForce Now apps for Linux and Amazon Fire TV devices in the coming months, which will give people without adequate gaming hardware the ability to access NVIDIA's cloud streaming platform instead. And lastly, a new set of G-Sync Pulsar gaming monitors is also now available, which uses a built-in light sensor to automatically adjust the brightness and colour on your display depending on the lighting in the room around you. All of this is better than nothing, but if you don't particularly care about AI, then this isn't the most interesting year at CES that NVIDIA has had.